teach you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we live, baby. Welcome to this episode of On Another Line Live here at 416 2024. And boy, do we have a slam banger of a show for you guys tonight. Um, first and foremost, we're going to give it a few seconds for those seven people that <laughs> religiously follow us up on. Um, and then we're going to get started. I'm really excited. Uh, JR and I are really excited to have um, Mr. Ferguson, Chris Ferguson, from uh, who has been like the head honcho and kind of like the motivation behind Casting for Kids, which is coming up not this weekend, but next weekend. 160 boat field with 20 or more people on a waiting list. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But with that being said, right after this short intro, we're going to get into talking to Chris and all things fishing, not only casting for kids, but uh, this episode of On Another Line. Let's get it! That's a lie of fisherman you wouldn't understand. Something you can't feel on dry land. Gotta get your arms way up in a cat. And set the hook on small mouth bass and then. Get your hands on a shamaru and a jeal and try to bet you like what you feel. Stay up on the day. Give it a world. Hello, welcome to my world. What's going on, y'all? Larry Slack in the house. Like always, what's up, buddy? I hope you uh have had a good weekend. But again. If you're joining us right now, I got a special episode for you tonight. We got Chris Ferguson coming on to talk about the Casting for Kids tournament. Several things coming up in the works. Not only the Casting for Kids, um, I guess you would call it the adult tournament here in two weeks. Uh, starts out in Gatesville. Uh, and then the top, I believe it's the top 20. I'll have to talk to him about that. Go to Paintsville Lake the next week. Um, it's crazy to think about the amount of weight that's been coming out of both lakes. It's been, th it took 22 pounds the other day to win a Grayson or uh, Yatesville. I'm sorry. And it took like 18 pounds to win a Paintsville. So it's shaping up to be an awesome deal. So without further ado, let's bring on Chris Ferguson and let's talk a little fishing. Casting for kids. What's up, Chris? How you doing buddy? Hey guys. Uh, awesome show. I, by the way, I love the song. Every time that I hear that thing, I, I mean, it just, I, I need that somewhere to play in casting for kids somewhere. I mean, it's awesome. But thanks yeah. for having me on, guys. I, I love the show, and I appreciate you very much what all you guys do. I appreciate it. Yeah, that song is a, is a, song, a single that I wrote and released in 2000. Uh, I want to think it was 2020, right before COVID. It was it was 2020. Uh, it was like March 13th, the day of my, after my birthday. Uh, but if you would, uh, you can find it anywhere, Spotify, YouTube, you name it, just search Tyler Waller in my world. But um, without, you know, if you don't know what Casting for Kids is, it's kind of. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. That's what I was going to say. Like it, You know, uh, it, it's like, first off, Casting for Kids is a, there's more than one tournament. Well, we're going to focus on the tournament coming up soon here at Yatesville and, and Paintsville. But. The whole premise of this is not about fishing. Uh, and I'm saying that uh, not lightly. That is the truth from what I can see. Again, I'm an outsider looking in. Um, I've fished it last year. It was an amazing tournament. Ran like a well oiled machine. But the end goal is what we're there all about. I bet and, it. You know, we're, we're there for people like Jack. You know, we're, we're here. And, and Jack, thankfully, it doesn't need this, the services of the Shriners or, you know, the stuff that Casting for Kids is. Uh, you know, thankfully, he's healthy. But a lot of people out there are not so lucky. Uh, and that's where Chris and the Shriners and Casting for Kids come into play to raise money for children in the Shriners Hospital and other places. Uh, and it's... It's a giant tournament, but again, it's more than just fishing. Um, I think that you can go out there and not catch a fish and still have a great day on the water knowing what your money is going towards. So correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Um, last year, and I may be overstepping my bounds saying this, but I think I saw like over a hundred thousand right at a hundred thousand dollars initially being donated for like the top 20 spots in takeoff order is, is that like fair to say 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we total revenue probably around a hundred grand, and that's thanks to a lot of good anglers. And this is an anglers tournament, is what it is. Uh, I say it all the time. I'm just a quarterback to a real good football team. The our Casper kids teams with unbelievable supports, and my wife and family, Donovan Faith, Faith's the founder. My daughter, I call her the founder. Oh, cool. Yeah, Neck Gators, they're coming again. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, we have anglers that start in January of, of gathering businesses and sponsors. And, and uh, they, like, say, I think uh, last year it was way up there. A guy got like 30 grand of total sponsors for first place. But, you know, I want all the anglers to know that even if you just get $100 or $200, uh, it's well appreciated and it's going to the Shriners Hospital. It's going to our kids event. I mean, we're helping kids all the way around. And we we, we now put uh, the biggest kids event on. It's without question the biggest in the country. And Paintsville, Kentucky is the biggest kids event in America. I'd never dreamed 10 years ago I'd tell anyone this. but And for what all's coming at the kids event this year, we can get into it in a little bit. But it, it's going to blow everybody's mind. Uh, there's so much good stuff coming, um, you know, but the, the big event that's coming here in two weeks is you guys are going to be a part of it. And I can't wait to see some of that good video footage. By the way, y'all done a great job on a video last year. Yeah. So I didn't know what to expect last year, to be honest with you. Um, and J this was, the that was, <laughs> so JR picked an, an awesome tournament to be his very first tournament ever as a voter. <laughs> Like we didn't just we didn't jump in like a club tournament with like 18 boats. So like, ah, screw it, let's go 160 boats. Jared's like, sure, let's go. And then, you know, that's like BFL slash Toyota series stuff. You know, you're there. And the one thing that I really want to commend you guys and your team on was when I so my anxiety level goes through the roof in the morning of tournaments because of parking and people yeah. knowing what's going on logistics but you guys had it nailed down where it ran through there like you know like a greased pig man I, I i went through there we put the boat in i found a place to park and i was back in the boat by 10 minutes which is crazy you know with 160 votes uh and it's really good so you know one four three, just, three, i think or what is it I think 144, yeah. something like that. But you know, so like, a little better this year, but I look at that though, and I was kind of like disheartened. But you get like an extra hour to fish. Yeah, that was kinda, like yeah. Didn't help, so it was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have to look at it different ways. But anyway, so you know, if you don't know what casting for kids is, there's several tournaments they have one down in uh Cherokee, and there's one again coming up in two weeks, which is these are highly sought after. I think you can get in still the one um, probably next year for Cherokee. There's still some spots open for that. But the one here, which I think has started at all, you started it here at Yatesville and Paintsville, correct, Chris? Yeah, we actually started uh, back 10 years ago. We only had a one day at Paintsville Lake. And uh, it is absolutely uh, just grew beyond anything imaginable. And the anglers will live through this. And when I say live through this, um, I have two events in my life that I, I'll never forget as long as I live that touched me uh, of, of unfortunate that uh, that are two anglers. And I didn't realize how big casting for kids was and how much it meant to anglers. One by a great man that's an awesome legend of Tim McDonald. That family asked me to speak at that funeral. I'll never forget this as long as I live. When I come out of there, I come out of the funeral. I didn't even know it was on there, but the hearse had two uh, stickers on the side of each door of casting for kids. The second one was happened. Unfortunately, we lost Bubby Boyd of William Boyd here of, uh, back in recent couple months back. Uh, you know, the family asked to have a casting for kids T-shirt for him to be laid to rest in. And that is an ultimate, ultimate uh, just it just broke me down and then when I go to the funeral I was there I see 50 anglers that's there at that funeral home with casting for kids t-shirts along with every Paul barrier that has casting for kids t-shirts to me on the angler side you know that completed me I mean if we never fish another day if we and and, and you know and as far as the angler side goes that is probably one of the most things that got me in 10 years 
these two events. And I get how much it means to anglers. And we are doing it for the kids, but it's an anglers tournament. And we, we work hard to give back for these anglers because all of you guys and you two, you two especially also are thinking of ways and giving back. King's Daughters Hospital give back. They, they give us a check. We thank them so much. They're there supporting. They bring the, the bus that does, you know, tests for heart, the doc there, and, and hoping we prevent something to happen to someone. And that was really cool and hope they do it again this year. And, and Tyler's making stuff to help us. And, and it's just everyone has a story of wanting to get – they've all bought in. And that's what touches me so much about the angler side of it is they got what we were doing 10 years ago to give back. And it just, just, it, I thought it was just in this area. It's not, it's from South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Georgia. I mean, there's, it's everywhere. And I can't believe we're blessed is what we are. It's a, just a blessed bunch. Yeah. And like I said, it's really tough to put into words. Um, stuff like that is crazy. You know what I mean? Like you're talking about people, you know, the people, the family thinking as, as much as the organization or what you guys are doing and what that person has done in their life, forecasting for kids, thought enough of them to be the final day here before they go to the resting place, which is crazy. And like, yeah. and I think that's, I think that's, you know, to be said for the impact that you guys are not just making on kids, but you're making on the community as a whole. Um, and again, like I, when I roll up to that fishing tournament, I obviously want to catch fish and I obviously want to win the thing. But at the end of the day, man, if I blank, I'm still going to walk out of there with a smile on my face and knowing that you guys have a, you know, a bigger kind of goal and everybody there is making that happen. Whether that be, you know, you guys have the, the first responders there. You have the police officers there directing traffic in the mornings. You, you know, you're, you're feeding people's breakfast. You're making sure, you know, all everything's safe and everything's good. Uh, and, you know, and, and on the grand scheme of the, that, you know, you're donating over a hundred thousand plus dollars to, um, help some children in need. And, and that's the whole deal about Shriners hospital. And I can't talk from experience luckily because I don't have any children. I definitely don't have any children that would need those special needs stuff. But, you know, so as far as I know, Shriners hospital is kind of like St. Jude's where you don't pay for anything. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, a child that goes to our hospital, Lexington, Greenville, uh, you know, around the country, this tournament is to help support Lexington, Kentucky, Shriners Hospital, uh, and over in Greenville. Uh, it helps that hospital also due to our Tennessee event. They, they give money out of what we raise in Tennessee event. Uh, but yes, I mean, a child comes to our hospital, if, if they don't have the means of paying, it is paid for. Uh, and, and there's no charge and we take care of them. Uh, we have awesome doctors. Uh, we take our uh, group each year and we present a check each year down the Shriners Hospital from these tournaments. We take a group with us. We, uh, we'll we have uh, a little meal and a get together and walk through the hospital, look at all facilities. I encourage as many that would go with us each year because we do it on a Saturday when no one's there, but it is a special place. I mean, they they are they're first class. Nice. Uh, so the question that we had from Brent, when's the last day they can, we can pre-fish for the tournament coming up next weekend? So the, weekend? so the off limits guys is, and ladies is, uh, the off limits, off limits days next week is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So the last day you can fish is Tuesday of next week. I do that on behalf of the working class folk. There's two reasons I do it. One to give the lake a break. I think it's honestly helped the spawn at Yatesville. If we look at what's been happening when I've had these around spawn times, I think you're starting might be able to see some results of having that lake shut down. And they've probably some good spawns that's showing up now over the last couple of years. I believe it's happening because of this, because those fish can get up there and, and spawn, relax, and probably are having good spawns. Uh, and, then, and then also it gives folks that work uh, that gives them opportunity to, uh, you know, say, hey, I've got a shot. I don't have a guy down there that if they were to be on the bed that's marking ball, I'm having to work. It's not fair. So I've looked at every angle, you know, and tried to, as a tournament director, to put myself over in the shoes of everybody and think of it. And I listen to, if there's a better idea, I don't know it all. And, and I'm always wanting to try new things to make it better. 
Yeah, so I think that makes sense. And by the way, if you're looking for the date, guys, the 23rd is the last day you can get on the lake. And I'm sure that's for both lakes, Yanksville, Yatesville yes. and Thankful. Yes. Uh, so the 23rd is next Tuesday. Chuck Dotson, what's up, buddy? Zach Miller says he's going to see us uh, here next weekend, which is good. Um, you know, I'm I'm excited to see, you know, this year as a more experienced angler with with the whole, you know, deal of, of casting for kids. Yeah. Um, you know, I created that video last year on a whim because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what to expect. It was our first time. Luckily, we got, you know, we were able to get in. And what I say about get in, guys, it's a 160 boat field. They open the tournaments up like January 1st or right after Christmas. Uh, Chris and his family start sending out invitations for people that have uh, previously fished. This is kind of an invitation only where there's only 160 boats uh, and you have there's only 160 spots. And the people that fished last year get fr first priority. Uh, and as far as I know, you said it was like third week in January was totally full, correct? Yeah, well, on on uh, January 31st, we were packed. I mean, actually, the third week of January, we're right at full. But the guys and ladies, you know, all the anglers, women, and men both, they do a phenomenal job. They live through it, and it's their deal. The one thing I will tell you, and I want to stress to everybody, and please share out there, we're right now in the Cherokee Douglas event that's going to be huge. Uh, we, we're in the 70s right now. What those all the anglers down there do, and there's plenty of room to sign up. And please go to casting the number four kids dot net, and and sign up online. But we need help of getting that full down there. But what they do down there is they uh, they like to come on the pre tournament meeting on that Friday evening and just slam us, which is good. That's fine. But it helps us as a, as as all of our workers and all of our uh, folks that put their hard. Uh, evening in and, 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 and help volunteer to sign up that day. It helps us by pre-registering online. You don't know how much that helps us. So if anyone would please sign up online early, you, that helps so many of us and, and takes the pressure off and uh, just having to fight all that that evening. And we can just check in, go on. But we'll take them that evening because it's all about raising money. So I, I, the top 30 Tyler and JR, they go to Paints Lake on the cut day. I take 30 boats. Cherokee and Douglas, the same thing. I'm going to take 30 boats. So you make the cut out of Cherokee, the top 30 boats is going to Douglas Lake. Just 30 boats going to Douglas. Day two on a two-day total combined weight. The good thing about both of this is, is that Kentucky and Tennessee events, if you make the cut, you have made the classic which is huge. The Classic is going to be the first annual Casting for Kids Classic October the 12th on Dale Hollow Lake. That's hotter than fire. So I saw this come. I knew how good Dale was. You, you're going to be able to catch them many different ways at Dale October the 12th. It's, it'll be really good. We're going to take out a Star Point Marina. Uh, you can have your boat slip reserved with Nathan down there. And the <laughs> cabins up on the hill to stay, walk down, step in your boat. It's, the, it's a great place to have a classic for the first annual. There'll be probably, there's going to be no doubt, a $30,000 purse for a one-day shootout of the 60 boats that qualify from Kentucky and Tennessee boats. So if you don't make the cut in Kentucky, jump in there and sign up and get in it, go down to Tennessee, have a shot at qualifying again there to make the classic. And there is a lot to shoot for. That's crazy. Um, so, I mean, if you think about it, like, According to the flyer here, and um, fourteen thousand dollar guaranteed payout for first place for this event, plus, I mean, you have a potential to win forty five thousand dollars <laughs> fishing for uh, uh, you know a good cause. Which, you know, that it's crazy to think about. You know, first off, how many people come out for this event? You know what I mean? You're talking about one hundred sixty boats, so you're looking at three hundred twenty people, and above and beyond that, you probably got another hundred people helping. And there's probably a hundred people there watching it or more. And plus all the people, you know, thousands of people in the background that have, you know, that you don't even know about. I'm sure Chris does, but there's people that help us out with the tournament that I've never met, you know, and, and I have nothing to do with the tournament other than I, I get a fish it. And I'm super you know, proud of that. But Chris, if, if somebody was, a, you know, if, if somebody was wanting to help casting for kids and they weren't an angler, I'm, I'm sure you guys are accepting donations all the time, correct? Yeah, we do. And, and, 
and, and we would be honored and humbled to take any donation, like I said, any amount from $10 to $5 or whatever you'd like to give. I mean, it's about giving from the heart and understanding what we're doing to raise money for kids. We, every one of us donate our time. We, I, I know I put a, a lot into it financially and, and do everything I can have for 10 years. And, and, and it means so much to me to try to accomplish, outdo the year before that's what i in my mind i go into it is i'm going to fight to 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 do my end of get as many network and then i hope it rubs off to other guys and, and ladies of how do we raise more how do we beat last year and that that's what makes me tick as far as for the kids and that's why we're doing it and, and if you've never been to the kids event at painful lake you will have your life changed when you walk out there and you see thousand plus kids that is smiling and you tell them everything they touch that day is free uh a big announcement that happened here that i've not even done it i've not announced this yet i won't we're going to do it at a later time announcing the company but i had a company a special group of people that come to me we got on a conference call and they said what do you need at the kids kids tournament i said well we need help buying probably 1500 rod and reels so they said, okay, I think we can do more than that. I said, what? They said, yeah. So anyhow, long story short, this company pledged to pay for the whole kids event that when I told them last year it cost us $24,000, they are paying for the kids event this year, one company. That was amazing. And I think that, you know, it's easy for somebody to give in that in the name of, of what's being accomplished. You know what I mean? It's again, I, I said at the beginning of the show and I'm going to stand by that from my outside perspective, this whole deal, the kids thing and the, the adult tournaments and things, it's more than just fishing. Yeah, it, It's about, you know, the, it's about the helping. Uh, and like I've, I've helped a way smaller event here at Lake Vesuvius with, with, uh, they had like, um, I don't know, it was like a youth day and they had a lot of kids in there and they turned trout loose. And like, you oh. know, it, it's something special to see, you know, I, I got to witness probably 20 people, 20 young kids that event catch their very first fish. Yeah. Um, and when it, in the grand scheme of things, when I look back, you know, I, I'm 40 years old, just turned 40. I've been fishing for every bit of 35 years. Um, but somebody had to teach me how to fish. And I think it was my dad and some other people. But I always said that bluegill is the gateway drug to fishing. Yes, absolutely. And it was mine. That's how I got started. I got started when I was seven years old. My dad took me uh, when I was seven, seven years old to Grayson Lake on a little rock cliff down there, bluegill fishing. And we had an old fashioned old tub, an old aluminum deal they took. I'll never will forget that smell of all those bluegill in it. I have <laughs> gone to this day. But it, I, I, was, I was snake bit from that day till now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So that's one question I want to ask you as being a hardcore angler like yourself fishing the Toyota series and whatnot, is it tough for you not to be on a boat fishing that day? It is the hardest thing that you could ever do. It's torture in some ways of not being able to fish because you, you know, you know what's going on. You, you, you know, you fished this lake since it's been in there and it is so hard wanting to fish. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, you know, but I get it. And, and, and I set myself aside, you know, them two days and each event because I want to do one thing on that, that weekend is I want to give the angler the best event they fish all year. I want to make sure that – and our team's the same way. They all carry the same personality They all from, from all the girls that help in, in documenting and, and, and all the folks that's with us, our whole team and staff. They take pride in it. They, it means something to park and it means something to set the trailer, taking it and set up. I mean, everybody has their role and they take pride in it. And we all want to give the anglers back the best event they fish all year. And, 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 and it rewards us when we hear, like you would just comment on parking and one thing to another. And that's, that's, what we, that's what we shoot for. Yeah, you know, I've been at some smaller even tournaments like a Renegade or something at Yatesville, and there'll be traffic backed up all the way out to like the gate to get in there. And it's like two hours to put a boat in. People are wrecking boats, getting on, you know, hitting trailers. And like it's, it. a, it's a catastrophe. 
Yeah. Um, so I do want to thank you guys for doing that. But he was talking about um, a second ago about uh, some things that are coming. This is just something small. That's that awesome. I'm, that I'm creating here. So I'll make my a little bigger here. That this is awesome. not totally done. Um, this is just on a piece of poplar. Um, I'm going to make these out of oak. We're going to make some. I'll make some for the first three teams. So first place, second place, third place of it. Uh, I'll make one for Big Bass. But the what um, Chris was just talking about, I'm going to make some of these for uh, the kids event, too. Um, I think that's, you know, this becomes something that hangs on somebody's, collects dust on somebody's shelf. You know, the adults are looking for that money. You know what I mean? But this right here, um, and again, this is not totally done. I stopped the machine because I just wanted to get this thing done to, to look at it. Um, but, you know, it's just something there. But the kids, man, like that kayak tournament and the kids tournament, I'm going to have these here. Obviously, the it's going to have the date down here that kind of got sanded off, but that'll be there. But this yep. is just something that we're going to be, uh, you know, adding to the mix, which is is very small. But yeah. uh, somebody, uh, Larry said, why limit to 160 boats? Why not make it bigger? And I am going to go out on a limb and say that it's a safety oh, act. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I would love to have 250 here and we could fill it up tomorrow if we announced it, but for safety one, we can't. And to give all the anglers, you guys, uh, some water to fish, I go out and I run around while this tournament's going on. I, I observe how much space and water is available around the lake. That's about the limit. And I, I stop it there because I, there's still a lot of gaps in open area to fish. The fish is pretty big, honestly. And it's those creeks and everything make it fish bigger than what the lake actually is. And that's a good place to be where we're at. I, 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 and and I, I like it there. And it, I feel that safety wise, that's about where we've got to stay. Yeah. So I, uh, one cool thing about this, and this is kind of like something that, so first off, you know, I don't want to dive into forward facing sonar. That's the low hanging fruit on everybody's podcast. I can care less about it. I use it. I think it's a, a tool just like anything else. But big tournaments like this on Yatesville, I think forward-facing sonar causes the lake to fish even bigger because yeah. you now have people fishing in the center of the lake looking for these fish that are going to be, you know, cruising. Um, like two of the, the best on the lake right now is Jacob Likens and Jimmy Boone. Those guys are tough to beat out there. Again, Jacob had 22 pounds the other day, and, and Jimmy comes in consistently with 17 to 20 pounds live scoping. And, you know, he's just a master at it, but... Those guys are one tough to beat in tournaments, but like I said, I think the forward-facing sonar thing allows the the it to fish doubly as big as it as it was. You know, Jr. and I said, or he said that we I think we drew boat one forty three or something last year, and we were all kind of bummed. You know, one forty three, man. You know, and because I've been at some tournaments that are way less than that, and you know, the you got to figure one hundred forty two boats ahead of you are going to be on the spot that you want to start before you get there. But luckily. As luck would have it, man, it was crazy. We had a spot we wanted to start. We drove bull, or we drew boat 142 or 143 or whatever it was. Went straight to our spot. Nobody was on there. Caught a keeper within like the first five minutes of fishing uh, and lacked one fisher making the uh, cut. So hopefully we can make that happen again with a little more success. And and, and I want to hear, JR, what's your thoughts on your first tournament you fished last year of that size? I mean, what? tell me your thoughts about this last man it was it was a blast like i i think about it as is as far as my memories of last year i have probably two really good memories from fishing last year one and the first one being you know my first big tournament and just seeing the people and i mean meeting you chris and all the people that um started this and then i think about when me and tyler went to uh, St. Clair and absolutely whacked a bunch of small mouth. So I, I think about that too. That was a blast, but um, it, it, I don't know, thinking back on it, just the way everything was run, like I'm glad it ended up being my first one. And I, it got so close that I was just like, well, I'm going to make this huge tournament be the, you know, the first one that I'm ever going to do just because it's one to remember. And then, and it's lived to the hype for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was crazy. So, like, we were coming back from the, the pre-tournament meeting. And it, first off, like, if you guys haven't watched the video I created last year, there was a girl. I can't – I don't want to say her name because I'm sure I'll get it wrong. I can't remember my students that I teach names half the time. But 
um, handed her the mic. She absolutely blew the roof off of uh, Johnson yeah. County high, high School down there, Johnson Central High School, singing the national anthem. Yeah. Even on that video, if you can watch it and you uh, don't have hair standing up on your body, you probably should check your pulse or go see JR at King's Daughters because you don't have a heart. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, from – we went down there and on the way back, I was like, what do you think, man? We drew boat 142 and he was like, man, I don't know what to think. Like, he goes, so, and he was like, well, I guess we could probably sleep in and just get there at this time. I was like, no, dude, we're getting there like two hours early because that was, that was where I come to my, like, I've seen so much stuff like that go on. And we got there, we were about an hour early from when the tournament took off, but we could have come there 20 minutes before we took off and, and been fine there, which you know, I think that it was just, it was, um, it was a whole experience for me. It wasn't just, it wasn't just being able to fish. It was seeing that pre-tournament meeting, seeing all the people that were there. But one of my, my biggest takeaways from this whole thing is, is that I've been a tournament angler for the best, better part of 15 years. And I fished some really big tournaments. Um, there are some people there that are absolutely, I'm just going to call them punks. There are people that they don't care what you're doing. If you try to talk to them, they could give a crap less. If it snowed oats, they don't want to talk to you. They're just there to fish. But one of the cool things about the Casting for Kids tournament is that everybody is there for the same reason. And yeah. again, I keep harping on this, but it's not to fish. It's there to make a difference. And everybody you talk to is happy-go-lucky. They're excited to go fishing. Hey, man, hope you guys do good. You know, and like it's all a big deal. The whole, you know, live takeoff that you guys do on Facebook Live. Like it, it's a, it's a big deal, man. And I think, and what Larry's talking about making it bigger is that, you know, as well as I do, if you made it a 500 boat tournament, there would be 550 people wanting to fish. Yeah. They, they, uh, it's amazing at how far around the States that they come. And, uh, you know, I tell the story about, uh, a buddy, a buddy told me this, that he had a friend that was in Disney world in Florida and the guy, Come up to him and say, he's seen the Casper Kids shirt walking through Disney World on a guy. And he said, hey, where do you live in Johnson County, Kentucky? Ain't that Paintsville? He said, sir? He <laughs> said, do you live in Paintsville, don't you? Johnson County, I see Casper Kids shirt. He said, oh, no. He said, sir, I live in North Carolina. So, you know, and, and they come from North Carolina to fish the Tennessee event, Cherokee and Douglas. So, and I, I've drew out co-anglers that I told them about in the Toyota series, and that's how – it dusted over in there, and they, they said, oh, we, we're coming. Rolling up Virginia, I've got – they drew out with me. They come, and there's so many guys that have spread out like that. It's, I, we have eight hours on the boat a day, and I tell them all the story and what all's happening, how much giving back. When they get out of that boat of a day, they're so – and if I don't catch anything, I've won because I get that group where he's at coming, and we're raising money doing that. That's the whole theme behind it is raising money. Yeah. And like, I don't know, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how you guys do it all. Um, and again, it's all about, you said you having a giant and a really great team. Um, and you know, that's the deal. Like I, it takes, you know, it kind of goes back to, it takes the village or it takes the community to make this thing happen. And, you know, I'm sure there's more people than you could, we could sit here for hours and you could, you would still forget people that you needed to think. But, you know, so if, if you are fishing the casting for kids tournament this year uh, and you're lucky enough to be in it and you've never fished the tournament before, there is a pre-tournament meeting that is there. Uh, let's see. That is uh, on the Friday, April 26th at 6 PM at Johnson central high school. Uh, and so one, so is that mandatory? I had somebody ask me that the other day. Just, it is mandatory, but just with one angler, uh, uh, you know, we, we know how some people's work schedule and all that. So you can rotate with your buddy and your wife or whoever angler. So you could, uh, you can have them come. You're both welcome to come, but we, we do that to give everybody how we're going to park, how we're going to take off, how, you know, it, that's the biggest problem about tournaments. I feel, I see today's world. I fish, I fish the Bass Opens, I fish Toyota Series over here. I've been in the FLW tour as a co-angler. I've seen and walked through everybody's hand, from Bill Taylor to, to uh, you know, uh, Chris Bowes at Bass. Uh, you know, I've seen everybody's hand. Ron Lappins is an awesome man. I love Ron. Had the rail backs through the years. I took a piece from everybody, 
and all their hands and made this into Casper Kids. They taught me how to do it. I, I went through the bag lines and I took a piece from all these great tournament, tournament uh, organizations. Mark, uh, Mark with Toyota Series now, Mark McQuaw that uh, puts on Toyota Series now. Mark's got a good staff. His crew's good on Toyota right now fishing. Uh, I just like to watch somebody come up with something new and creative and a, where I can bring it back and bring it to all you guys and ladies. And, and that's what I love about it. You know, you have to love it to do it. Yeah, you're right. So I had a lot of people. So there's a big giant tournament in the area. And luckily I'm not in charge of it anymore, but there was a fella in the area. You may have heard of him or maybe knew him. His name was Mike back or I'm sorry. Uh, Mike uh, Drummond. Uh, Mike back was also a great guy, great uh, angler in the area, but Mike Drummond had a tournament in the area called the River Rat, and it was an invitational. And there was like fifty boats invited every year, and you it was kind of, it wasn't near as big as casting for kids, and it was a for profit tournament. Everybody, you know, it was hundred percent payback. But my best friend Kyle Malone was his nephew, so it kind of got passed to us, and we ran that thing for two years, and it was the absolute. I mean, we fished in it even, but it, man, it the logistics of making all that work just for a small tournament like that. You know, which again makes me want to commend you guys that that much more because you guys have a great event for a great cause, and everybody that I know of has a great time. And and you know, and in the I couldn't imagine being a parent in a situation where one I couldn't afford the child care for my child that could be needed to save that child's life. Like it's yeah. not like, you know, this is not like they need a cast on their foot, something they could go to King's daughters or something for. This is something that they're probably going to need specialized care for, whether that be childhood cancer or, you know, God forbid something even worse than that. Um, you know, I couldn't imagine being in a parent situation. One, knowing that my child or my children have that ailment that I couldn't do anything about, but I couldn't imagine being in a situation where I knew that my child needed help and I couldn't give them the help that they needed because I couldn't afford it. And that is huge for the Shriners and you guys at Casting for Kids. And we talked about it last year. You know, even if you raise two hundred fifty dollars or $500,000, that's a huge amount of money to me and you and JR and everybody that's watching this podcast. You know, or maybe it's not, maybe 500, maybe you're making four or 500, you know, four or $5 million a year, or whatever, still $500,000, a lot of money. Um, but on the grand scheme of things, when you think about how much it costs per hospital stay, you know, if you think you're not making a difference for that $5 donation, I'm here to tell you, you're, you're going to be wrong. You know, every little bit helps. Um, I can tell you from personal experience. My dad, before he passed away, was in the hospital for 15 days, uh, and his hospital bill was over a million dollars. Wow. So it's um, it's crazy the amount of money, um, you know, and obviously I'm not knocking on JR and their profession. They deserve to get paid that much. But, you know, if you are in a situation where you can't afford it, I couldn't imagine being in that situation because it's bad enough that your child has to have that care but knowing that when you go there, you like if you don't go to Shriners or somewhere, there's a potential they turn you away. Yeah, and that's that's very well said, and that's what we were talking before we come on. Of you know, we shoot for you know 150 thousand to give away a check and and each year and 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 give back to our local Shrine Club. We give back to the Temple. We give to uh, Corbella Temple in Knoxville, Tennessee, and that's still working in the network of transportation free of charge to the Shriners Hospital. And uh, shout out to Barry Clark and Greg Friend. I see them pop up. Barry Clark here has a great organization too. I'd like to see you guys get him on. He has the Kylie's Kids Foundation. That that Tyler, that's what we uh, we have our kayak event named after. It's Kylie Clark. Barry lost his daughter, uh, Kylie Clark, here last year. And, and uh, on behalf of we love that family of, of them so much that we named our kayak event after the Kylie's Kids Foundation. And it is an outstanding foundation that they do here in Eastern Kentucky throughout giving back to kids. So I'd love for you to get him on here sometime and have a show with him. And, and Greg Friends, another good guy that popped in, him, his family. And uh, that's the thing about these anglers that they carry this burden and this desire of giving back like we do and and it shows and they'll raise and hustle and get money 
And Barry actually was huge today with my boy's help and uh, getting a big grant. And my, my son Donovan wrote a grant and Barry was instrumental helping. So we're going to announce that coming up. We've got so much good stuff that's coming. I mean, it just, it's humbling. It just touches you, you know? Yeah. I get So uh, Barry, we'd love to have you on, man. Shoot me a message. We'll definitely have you on for sure. And so th I'm sure this has nothing to do with the two, but we, JR and I, we went to the Dell Hollow for the very first time. We oh, went, awesome. We went to um, a, or we stayed in an Airbnb and it was called Kylie's Cove. Probably has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I, look at that knife. I mean, that's that's that's, that's awesome. So this is uh, Brent Jones just sent me this that uh, he is going to donate this uh, for uh, the pre tournament to try to raise more money for the cause. Um, so this would be a one of a kind knife. It looks like. So. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. you, speaking of all people that are doing their thing and just everybody stepping in to do what should be done and has to be done. I mean, it's, it's an amazing cause. Yep. So, and again, if you guys are just watching or, you know, somebody uh, again, this, this show right here and the whole deal is not, this is not a televangelist telethon, you know, and we're not saying for you to give us $20. We're, you know, we're not doing that, but if you're looking for a good cause that makes a great difference to children and it's, it's, it's pretty local. I mean, you're talking about Lexington, you're talking about places like this that, you know, and it's, it could be somebody, you know, it could, it could be your neighbor's kid that, that actually gets this, uh, you know, that gets this help. And that was the greatest thing about me. You know, I built a guitar last year for the Shriners and they raised like $10,000, which I was happy with. That, but, all, all of the guys at the temple, uh, Tyler, I, and I want to personally thank you along with Eddie Hazlett and, and all the guys at our temple. Eddie had talked to me about that. He called me one night. So excited. He said, you got to meet Tyler. You got to meet Tyler. You can't believe what he's doing. I said, what's that? He says, building a guitar. I said, what? He said, yeah, we're going to have that and donate. So thank you very much. That was, you know, you take 10 grand of what that raised. I mean, that could take probably 20 kids free of charge or more transportation from the A-team in Ashland, Kentucky. That that paid for all those families going down there. We feed them a meal free and come back in a van free transportation if they can't afford to drive and don't have the money to go back to the hospital. 10,000 on that can and take, you know, probably 50 trips and, and you know. And that, that's what it's about. And, you know, my guitar build was a very minute situation. You know, I build guitars with kids every day. That's what part of the, you know, the teaching aspect. I teach kids a STEM guitar program, um, which sidebar, I'm really excited in the next three years. I just got a $2.2 .2 million grant. Uh, to start an advanced manufacturing program in my high school. So things are going to get a lot better. Wow. Um, but, you know, so I started building these guitars with kids six or seven, eight years ago as an after school program. And it's, 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 you know, it's kind of got big, but you know, there's, there's a lot of companies that, like Larry Slack that's on here. He was the guy that was very instrumental to me getting the guitar building stuff started. Uh, I had, I needed guitar wood and my my high school said, yeah, you can start a guitar bill, but we're not going to give you any money because uh, they didn't have any money to give me. So uh, I reached out to Larry and that's how Larry and I have become buddies. He was working at a wood mill at the time and donated a bunch of northern ash and that, you know, the rest is history. But the wood that I get now, I have to give a shout out to Hair White Lumber in Moorhead, Kentucky, because they are instrumental in my guitar builds. They donate every stick of lumber that I need, um, whether that's maple for the necks, poplar for the bodies. I call Ray White down there and be like, hey, right. And he knows me my name, answers the phone. Hey, Tyler, what can I do for you? Um, you know, and, and it's people like that. It's people like, um, you know, Extreme Custom Paint, Tra uh, Tracy McKenzie. He paints every guitar that I donate. Like I take it over there. He knocks it out. One off paint job doesn't charge me a quarter. Probably would be a $10,000 paint job. He puts that much effort into it. So, you know, my building is just kind of like, a, a you know, a, it's a grain of sand in the ocean compared to what, what everything that happened there. But, you know, we were talking about it and I, I want to try to do this year. So obviously this has nothing to do with casting for kids yet, but it may soon. I was donated a case during that Shriners guitar build by a company in Austin, Texas called Calton cases. They make one off guitar cases that are fiberglass molded to a specific guitar. Um, these things are anywhere from 10 to, or they're like a thousand bucks all the way up to $2,500 a piece. 
the guitar case that I have was like $1,700. They donated it to me. Uh, the Shriners guitar was, was, um, won by, uh, Candida Sperry, who was the manager at the laid back, which w recently got destroyed in a tornado. And those folks are, you know, kind of reeling from that. But she won the guitar and donated it back to the Shriners. But she heard me talking about the case so much that I, I told her that I wanted to buy the case back from the people that got it. I wanted to give I wanted the opportunity to buy the case back. I could build a guitar. I could build another guitar next week. Um, but you know, the case was something that was a one off deal. So she donated the case back to me, just being nice. And since then, I have this goal, uh, and Casting for Kids might be one of those those vendors or those donors that I or those recipients. My goal is to raise a million dollars with that guitar case for charities. I'm going to build a guitar every year. I'm going to fill that guitar case up. I'm going to donate it to a, a charity, let them sell it and raffle it, and whatever the money they make, we're going to add it to to the total. They give me the case back whoever the you know whoever wins that guitar the that that previous year i'm going to ask them their charity of choice i will then build a guitar donate it to that charity again my goal is to raise a million dollars with a guitar case so i've only got uh what nine hundred ninety thousand left well that's <laughs> well that's a that i mean i think it's a goal you'll reach tyler and and, and we like to set our bar and, and we was thinking big and it got me thinking the last show we done last year on the year about, you know, that money don't go that far. I would love to someday have a goal of we have a million dollar raise on these events combined total. And I, I, I'll say, why not? You know, why can't we do that? Right. And, you know, bigger you know, the better. Bigger the better. And, and if we get more corporate America and more people giving back and getting involved and more of these bigger state, you know, the words, we just got to get the word out there. There is, there's big companies out there, if they see our product, you know, I, I feel they would be, you know, bought in uh, what we're doing. Yeah, uh, and I think it's, you know, it, because it's an easy sell, man. You just tell them, hey, here's the deal. Um, and, you know, let's call a spade a spade here. It's a it's a charitable donation, so these people are going to able to use it as a tax donation or tax write-off and stuff, and that's yeah. kind of, that's corporate America for you. Yep. But this is an easy way for you to feel good about coming off with some of that money. Uh, and if you have a giant corporation and you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations, here's a great cause to do just that and make a difference all while doing it. Yeah. I, that, that's those are two of the biggest things I remember from last year. I remember one, my, my best memory is it being about 5 a.m. and me and Tyler just sitting around in the boat, pitch black, with all those 159 other boats sitting around. And that was just kind of, I don't know, really cool, honestly. That many people together for one common goal. Two, <laughs> we were at the um, pre-event and me and Tyler were like, oh, okay, let's see how much these people are, are going to say, you know, on uh, how much they're going to put in to get this. And we we're like, ah, man, I'll probably start like a hundred bucks, you know, something like that. $10,000. <laughs> yeah, 10, right off the, right off the kit, you know, it was like, Whoa. Uh, yeah. Like I, I went from sitting in my seat to setting three rows back. Cause it knocked me back that far. Yeah. Away. Whoa. It was like, great. Uh, like, and oh was so good at that. Remember that it was like, uh, there's pork chops. I remember the food. Really good. That dinner was phenomenal. Yeah. Who, who, what the? What, there's a local um, yeah. cafe that does that, right? Yeah, it was Linda's Cafe in Paintsville, Kentucky, and they just now do catering only. And by the way, they are catering again this year. And yes. uh, we, we've got we've got a uh, they're catering, uh, and he's got a meal that's Alan Rose. Alan Rose Angler also. He not only does that, he'll have all the biscuits fixed for us Saturday morning, all 350. Uh, and he gets up, him and his wife, at 2 a.m. in the morning. Awesome. They just hard timing. And shout out to Big Al and uh, Linda's Cafe for for feeding all of us Friday night and into Saturday morning and Sunday, too. Yeah, so that uh, – I will, JR's right, man. I didn't know what to expect. Went in there, had a giant pork chop. All the fixings. <laughs> it was giant. It was like as big as my head. And trust me, I got a big head. Doc, Doc may get honest for eating a lot of them chops and all that. Hey, food. man. We need to start putting some fish on the menu there, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, he fishes with me enough, drinking like you know, it's kind of like job security for him fishing with me, Chris, to be honest with you, because like I'm smashing like two 16 ounce Red Bulls in the morning and he's just shaking his head, you know, like, like you're going to reap and watch your sow, bro. <laughs> so if you get into the vein, he's there. I'm sure that he's like ready to hit you hard. Yeah. Oh man. It's yeah. uh it's brutal though. Cause he'll, he'll bring out the combos and I'll just be like, it's like nostalgic for me. And I'm like, Hey man, let me try this combo real quick. <laughs> it's it's like that Jace, that Dave Chappelle skit. He's like, "Hey man, you got any more of those combos?" Yeah. <laughs> any more of those combos? <laughs> oh man, you yeah, can't. So, I mean, but anyway, like I said, back to casting for kids. We're about that fifty minute mark. So, Chris, first off, from an angler's point of view, um, I want to thank you for what you guys do. Um, and I've, I mentioned this a hundred times before, uh, obviously making these plaques is something that we'll take care of. Um, but I don't have, we don't have a giant following here at honor of the line, but if anything that we can help you out with, we'll definitely do so. Uh, and if, if somebody wants to donate, how can they get a hold of you? Okay. Let me give you my sale. And I don't care to give it out, but it's on every program in America on all these things, but it's six Oh six. 793-2894 is my cell. And you can text me and you can message me on Facebook. And uh, and But on a, on a key way to do it, also to donate to castingthenumber4kids.net. Go on the castingnumber4kids.net that Tyler has listed here. There is a You can scroll down, thanks to Jason Kenner, uh, with JK Multimedia, who has been – Jason's helped me so much. And shout out to Jason Kenner and Jason, he, he he built this website for us and you can go down there and he's got it built where you can donate online and give the casting for kids. I promise you that this money is for real. We take pride in making sure that it goes to the kids event, Shriners Hospital, Lexington, Kentucky, Greenville, uh, and then uh, the hospital in Greenville over there. And, and we give back a couple other, uh, uh, events that we give to is Kylie's Kids Foundation of Barry's, Barry Clark's. We give to that each year. And then we give to the Ava Center in Pikeville, Kentucky. That's for autistic kids. That's They've got a good thing going there. We give back to them each year for the Ava Center. It's, I took a walk through that. And I have to tell you, it's it, for local area, it's, it's, it's impressive. And I appreciate what they're doing. And and uh, But the Shriners Hospital is our main goal of giving back to kids, whether it's to our local Shrine Club, Big Sandy Shrine Club, we give a check to them each year for transportation of kids from Paintsville, Kentucky. We give to our temple, Ashland, Kentucky, El Hassa Temple. We give a check to them. We give a check to Corbella Temple in Knoxville, Tennessee, because we're down there. And let me tell you guys, those 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 people down there is so fired up of us coming down there this year that they are beside themselves. And they are as jacked up as around here is. And they're going to have golf carts down there. We're going to have biscuits from those guys down there to give an ever angler a biscuit that morning. We're going to feed them all Friday night. It's it's there now like it is here. So please go online, sign up for that big Cherokee Douglas two-day event. I promise you, you'll have a good time. And jump in there and help us support kids. We, we, we need it. That's awesome. Uh, Aaron, um, these, you said post your PayPal. If you're wanting to do a credit card uh, or a, a debit card donation, you can do that on castingforkids.net. You yeah. go on to the donation page. Uh, if you choose, it's actually on the page. I, as a matter of fact, I'll just show you here because, you know, we are in the, we are in the world of digital. So um, casting for kids here, let's share this thing out. So if you go to castingforkids.net, this is the home page. Uh, online registrations up here. You can get access to that Cherokee and Douglas. And again, if you are a tournament angler from the year previously, you can online register here for the uh, Yatesville tournament as well. But if you hover over registration payment, you can see here that there's a donation page. Uh, and down here is the opportunity for you to add a credit card and a donation amount. And again, this is a trustworthy, uh, you know, environment. It's not going to be, you don't have to worry about your money going to astray. Uh, every dollar that you give will be going to stu going to kids. So that's what it's all about. So yeah. if you guys don't have any more comments um, or um, to, to Chris or anybody here, 
Um, again, Chris, thanks for coming on. Um, it's going to be an amazing, it's going to be an amazing year. Number two for me and Jr. Um, you know, hopefully we get out there and catch a few more fish and make it to day two. Uh, again, guys, if you're just now joining us, the off limits day for both lakes is the 23rd. So you can fish through, I guess, midnight, the 23rd, if you're really yeah. hardcore, um, uh, the 23rd, which is next Tuesday, both lakes are off limits thir or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, you do have to have at least one angler from your team at the pre-tournament meeting, which is on the uh, Friday, the 26th. That's Johnson Central High School. They are going to feed you. Uh, there's some raffles to get on there. Last year, I think Borders donated uh, an NRX Plus or GLX Loomis rod. Uh, there's a lot of different stuff there. Uh, again, some net gears and stuff that were free to the anglers that were there. You go again. there, listen to you know what Chris has got going on, telling the story. Um, there, there's some live videos. Even if you're not being a part of it, you can check out Casting for Kids Facebook page. They do a live presentation of not only that night, but for the tournament, the takeoff and things away in. So definitely dive in there. Um, but again, you know, draw a number there and, and, you know, may, may the odds be forever in your favor. And, and shit, shout, shout out to the founder my daughter Faith Ferguson here giving a giving a plug here. Guys. That's awesome. That's Faith the celebrity there. Yeah, that's awesome. So so Faith is the the reason that we're all here. Yep. Which is amazing. So again, Chris, uh, thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. And again, we're looking forward to the event. Looking forward to um, you know having Barry Clark on here soon. And you know it, it's 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 from the bottom of my heart that I want to say thank you because of what you guys are doing. I'm glad that I get to be a part of it. Um, and again, I I'm hoping that I'm hoping that I'm fishing the day that you guys give a million dollar check. Um, and we'll work to try to get that, uh, going forward. And again, if you guys are looking to, uh, have a way to donate some money, uh, to this, you can go to casting the number four dot, or casting number four kids.net, which is on the bottom of the screen here. There's a donation form there. You can also get registered for the Cherokee event that's on there. As Chris mentioned, it makes it easier for them to do it on there to make sure you're pre-registered. That way you're not going down there and bombarding the people that are taking the registrations there. Just makes it easier on everybody. So if you're planning on fishing that thing next year, uh, make sure you get you get registered because eventually that thing's going to fill up and be just like Yatesville is, and you're yes. going to be on the outside looking in. Yes, and that's why I'm encouraging everybody now to go on there and sign up because what you once it fills up, It'll be just like Kentucky. We're done, and it's full every year, you know, and it's done too. So it's important for you to get your name in the hat in Tennessee. That way you're going to be done, you know, because it's going to fill up. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Jared, do you have anything else? No, I'm just – this whole conversation has made me so excited, and I'm, I hope we make it to the second day. I will be excited and honored and – I just can't wait to keep making this a bigger part of, uh, of what we do. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited that King's daughters is, is, you yes. know, continuing to support casting for kids. And, and that's something I will encourage them to keep on as one of the biggest, uh, employers in Ashland. I think they should be giving a hefty check to you guys. And I hope that just continues and increases. Well, thank you both, and, and you know, for this was tonight, and I've done this for ten years. I'm not just saying it because we're on here, but I'm telling you, I've done this for ten years. This tonight is the most productive podcast that I've ever done anywhere because of how you shared the information on here to donate, tell them how to sign up. Tyler, you nailed it, and I just want to—I'm going to share it on everything we got, and have a lot of people share this because. You both of you guys, your heart is in the right place, and you're wanting to do this for the for the good of the kids. And I know, being in the education field, you're giving all your time to help kids. Doc, there is is saving people's lives for goodness' sake. So, uh, God bless both of you. Thank you so much for having me on here. And I I hope to see you all dance the morning of Sunday to make it the top thirty come through on your boat. You got to dance to some kind of music I'll have going. Yeah, so I, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet, but uh, the people on live are going to know that I'm there. Uh, we'll just put it that way. <laughs> hey, hey, Doc, he's got to come out and sing, right? I mean, he has to sing. I figure. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna fish in a Santa costume. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't figured it out, but I promise you, it's gonna be. It's gonna be wild. So again, 
Um, if you're out there and you're looking to fish, again, you can't get in the Yatesville tournament unless somebody drops out. And if you were to put yourself on a, on a list right now, you're 20 to 25 deep. So it would have to be 25 people fall out from last year for you to get in. So the opportunity for you to get in casting for kids is null and void pretty much. Unless yeah. you know somebody that's already fishing it and they need a co-angler. That would be the way you'd get in there. But, um, you know, the as we mentioned earlier, the uh, Cherokee and Douglas event down there, uh, it's something you can get in on. And, again, it's going to fill up eventually. It's not that far away, guys. You're talking about down in the Smoky Mountains, like four hours from here. It's not a giant drive. Really great fisheries. Uh, and as um, Chris was talking about earlier, they're having a, a classic coming up. You know, that's the first one is this year in October or next year? October this, this year in 24, October the 12th. So, so there's a bigger celebration this year if you make the cut. You're in the classic. And you, you only are part of 60 boats uh, that for one day shootout of a $30,000 purse. And I had a guy that actually fishes the Bass Pro Tour and the Invitationals called me today saying that I hear this right on a classic. I said, yeah, but you know, it's anybody's game and you know, uh, anybody can win this, uh, you know, you know what, no matter if you do it wherever the local anglers here are as good as guys that do it every day for a living. There is some very talented anglers here that just don't know how good they really are. They're as good as the guys doing it every day on tour. I'm telling you, there's some very gifted, talented anglers in Eastern Kentucky and the tri-state region. Right. So, you know, that's one thing about it is like, if you make the top 30 in either of those events, like you should consider that a, a win. Like, yes. you know, like I said, I, I mentioned a couple guys there, Jacob Likens and, and Jimmy Boone and Aaron Strickland. And there's people in this area that are just sticks. Um, yeah. you know, and I, I'm really, it's weird to think about this here before we get off here. How come in our area, I'm going to leave this question with you and I want you to ponder on this because I still cannot figure this out. How come, there's so many people within a hundred mile radius of where we live that like to fish so daggone much. It's not because we live on a great fishery, man. We live in the armpit of America for bass fishing. I, I, I think it, I think it's the, what you can have, you'd like to have drive and momentum. Right. And, and I think that is what it is. Uh, I've always said it from day one, passion lives here. Uh, a quick story right fast is Bubby Boyd that passed away this couple months back would sit in his boat at Yatesville Lake, ask me, can I stay in my boat and rig all night? Wouldn't go home. And when I said passion lives here, he was the guy that I was talking about. William Boyd would not go home, sit in his boat and rigged all night, wouldn't sleep at Yatesville parking lot and said, Chris, I can't go home and sleep. He said, I love it. I said, stay here and rig. I said, I got to check your live well. So said it don't matter. So said here, Rick. So, he, you know, he, it's, it's just, you know, passion lives here. And, and the most passionate angler in this tri-state region right here blows my mind of how, how, how they live to fish around here and they want to give back. And I saw through it years ago with knowing the heart of these anglers. And I knew that they would give back and I knew they would go at it and they'd have their own story to tell. And, and, and it's proven it so many testimonies through 10 years i can tell you some of the best stuff you've ever seen and heard of that just class act people that just live through this thing and it's it's awesome you know? that's amazing so again guys if you guys are looking for some info to get in there casting for kids.net it's on the bottom of the screen here um and if you want to get a hold of chris personally you can rewind this back about 10 minutes ago he physically gave his uh cell phone number for you um if you're looking to donate again casting for kids.net there's a excuse me, a donation uh, thing on there uh, is tax deductible. Obviously it's a nonprofit deal for the Shriners, but with that being said, we have, um, we have a lot to be uh, thankful for uh, and we have a lot to be excited for in the next couple of weeks. So uh, I appreciate yeah. it and I look forward to it. And guys, if you, um, if you want to be a part of it, definitely go over into the website and every little bit helps, whether it's a dollar or a or hundred thousand, um, whatever you can give. And if you can't, if your heart's in the right place, fine too, because I understand that. But with that being said, guys, thanks for joining this episode of On Another Line Live. Uh, and as always, if you guys can, get out there and lean on them. We'll see you next time on Another Line.